like it. Hey man, all right, guys. So here we are. We're here. We are yet again to another series, another installment on Mind Renewal. This is number four. All right. Romans 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ephesians 4, 21 through 23. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the, for the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt, according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Again, guys, my renewal is vital in our walk with Christ, you know, because the enemy will present so many things to us, whether it's a devil, whether it's the flesh, whether it's the old carnal mind that's trying to uh, have the, 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 the forefront in your life, the enemy will try to present a picture to you that will make you come into agreement with that picture opposed to coming to agreement with, with what God is saying about you. You can, have, you can have both of your parents have glasses and you can say, well, man, I'm going to have to wear glasses because both of my parents, you're opening up something in your life to have access to you opposed to saying, oh, I see that and I see that, but it's not going to be for me. Uh, no, it, my, my vision is going to be good. It's going to be clean. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be 2020. You know what I mean? You, again, we talked about before, uh, you, there's a line of cancer that runs in your family. You know, my dad had cancer. My dad, dad had cancer. I'm going to get cancer. No, you're not. No, because you're coming into agreement with what the enemy is presenting to you. When God says, look, you're of a new bloodline. God says, all things have passed away and behold, all things become new. But we want to hang on to the natural. My earthly father, my earthly mother, opposed to our heavenly father said this. My heavenly father is this. And so, as it says in Isaiah, whose report are we going to believe? The report that we believe is the, the, the experience that we get to walk in. The report that we believe is the experience that we walk in. So we're going to jump here to Daniel chapter six, verses one through 24. It's a pretty, it's a lengthy read, but again, I think it's important to see the context here um, as we talk about being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And as we're being transformed, again, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that we may, that we may what? That we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so my renewal doesn't just affect my body. It affects my situation, it affects things around me. And if we can lock this thing in, we can see these things. We can see the reality of the kingdom manifest in our life. This is something that we're all, I'm growing in, this is something that you're growing in and in different areas. I may be, I may have my mind renewed over here, but over here, I need to renew my mind continuously. You may have your mind renewed over here, but over here, you may need to renew your mind. Ah, I just, I'm, I'm still reaching. I'm still pushing to access what it is that God has already given me. Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a matter be established as we were talking about coming into agreement with whoever's report. All right. But we want to go ahead and jump into Daniel chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set the kingdom in 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. To, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was the first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none, occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. 
Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. I got to make him sound a little swanky. King Darius, live forever. <laughs> All the presidents of the kingdom and governors and princes and counselors and captains have counseled, consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing, that it may be not be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went to his house, and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree? that every man that shall ask petition of any god or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, the thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, that Daniel, which is the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king when he heard these words, was so displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establisheth may be changed. Then the king commanded, <laughs> then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thy service continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him and his sleep went from him. Then the king rose very early in the morning and went in haste to the, unto the den of lions. And when he came to the, den of, to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thy service continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the, the lion's mouths, that they may not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den, so that Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. I got to read that again. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they bought those men which had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had mastery over them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Amen. There's a couple things that we could point out here really quick. For one, to have that report that Daniel has. Yo, we can find no fault in this man. He had a, he had such an excellent spirit that he was one of the three presidents over top of all the princes, but he was the president of presidents. <laughs> what does that remind you of? He was the president of presidents. He was a king over king. He was a lord of. Who does that remind you of? But to have such a report that they're like, yo, we can find no fault in this brother, except 
we make a way where he'd have to choose what we say or his God, and we know he's going to choose his God. Therefore, we can find, we can catch him. Other than that, we can't find out the light. To have that report, guys, that's just, that just goes without saying. To have that report, we can find no fault in him. And you know, when you're walking in Christ, God does it, God looks at you and he finds no fault in you. When you're walking in Christ, he finds no fault in you because that fault was put on Jesus. He bore that. He paid for that. Now, I'm not talking about living this. I'm not talking about living in a backslidden sl state. I'm talking about walking in Christ, growing in your identity. Not having obtained that, but growing in your identity. Amen? And so mm -hmm. these guys... These guys say, look, King, mute your mic. These guys said, King, look, this is how we're going to get him. Well, I didn't say this to the king, but this is how we're going to get him. We're going to make this decree, and we know he's going to continue doing what he do, and then we got him. We'll get rid of him, and then we can have rule. We won't have to answer to a, a man of God, right? We'll be able to do what we want in the kingdom, right? And so... Daniel, knowing that this thing is out there, knowing this bill has been passed, he doesn't hide wisdom. Wisdom, which we would hear, it may be in the church, we might hear natural. Wisdom would say, well, Daniel, just close your windows, you know, change up the way you do things and, you know, hide that you're still praying to your God. You know, that way you'll be safe and that way God will protect you. And depending on where you are in faith, that may be the best course for some people. But when you're when you're understanding who you are in Christ and you're in, in, in that level where you're like, yo, like there's nothing they can do to me. There's nothing they can do to me. Daniel said, look, I see my window. He went to the window, he prayed. He probably looked out and saw them watching him and continued to pray anyway. It doesn't say that, but they saw him up there praying. You know, he goes to the window, he continues. Now it don't matter what they, it don't matter what this says. I serve God. You know what I mean? And so again, this is where the thing where if your law, the law of the land uh, overrides the law, tries to override the law of God, you continue to stand on the law of God. Now, other than that, we, we follow what the law of man says. But if the law of man is trying to go against the law of God, the law of God takes precedence. All right. Because again, we see in Romans that we are supposed to be obedient to our governors and this, that, and the other, and blah, 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 blah. All right. And so, uh, where are we? What could Daniel have stood on? You know, we know, we understand that in Exodus 14, 14, it tells us that the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. I'm pretty sure Daniel knew that. Was he standing on that alone? Don't know. What we do know is that he trusted the Lord, his God was going to deliver him. This is what we do know. Uh, as we look forward, we see Daniel walk out this next principle here in Psalm 18, two through three. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Again, Psalm wasn't written back then with Daniel, but Daniel walked out a principle in God that had not even been penned in time yet. In time, this word of God has not been penned for Daniel to look at Psalm and say, you know what? The Lord is my rock. He's my fortress. He's this. But he walked that very principle out because he was, when, when you're in a fortress, and the enemies are around you, you're standing, you're holding your ground in the fortress. When you're in a high tower, you're holding your ground in that high tower. Standing on the rock, you're standing on, you're holding your position. The Lord shall fight for you, it says in Exodus 14, and ye shall hold your peace. Could he have stood on that? Could he have stood on Exodus? I believe so. I believe so. 
Um, so when we get to when we get to okay, the, the the king is like, man, ah, what y'all make me do? Let me see if I can save him. The king had a he had a, a, a decent heart concern in the matter, right? Ah, what, let me try to save Daniel. Ah, I can't save him. The decree went forth to stand the other. Then the king's like, Daniel, your God will save you. Yeah, he's he's saying that out of a hope, out of a wish. He goes back and he's praying and he's fasting and no music came before he lost sleep. He didn't even sleep. Daniel, your God will save you. You know what I mean? And so, so then, uh, uh, the, 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 so what did Daniel have? Okay, look, I'm going into this lion's den. He had options presented to him. I'm going to be destroyed going into this lion's den. That's an option that was presented. That's a, that's a, that's what happens naturally. You go into a den of lions, there's death awaiting you there. But Daniel stood on something else. God is with me. God will protect me. He's my deliverer. I believe in him. And when he got in there, the mouth of the lions was closed. He probably used one as a pillow, probably used one as a footrest. These are hungry lions that were so vicious that they broke all the bones of the men and their families before they even hit the ground. Their bones were broken. We don't know how many lions it was, but before they hit the ground, all their bones were broken. So they were some pretty, they were pretty vicious. But Daniel trusted. And so we can say, well, look, uh, yeah, that's for Daniel. You know what I mean? Because uh, we see through history, we see all the martyrs and they were cast into the gladiatorial arena. I don't even know the gladiator arenas. And uh, the lions and stuff had mastery over them. The lions and stuff uh, had victory over them. And we went over this in Hebrews. It says some of them chose not to be delivered. I've talked to a brother that has missionaries out in other countries and he talked to the people that come in. Some of them want to be martyred. They expect martyrdom. <laughs> and it has its place. But Daniel believed his God. No, this ain't it for me. Not that he's denying God. He didn't deny him on any stretch of the way, but no, I'm not about to get tore up by these lions here. Maybe his heart was beaten. Maybe his heart was not beaten. But he said, nah, that, that ain't, that's not my answer there. Lord, you'll keep me. You're my deliverer. You're my strong tower. You're my defense. You're my present help in my time of trouble. You will deliver me from my enemies. Can we stand on those same things? Can our situation be, be shifted because our mind is so focused on what God has said about us? This is mind renewal. When I can look at every single thing that's being presented to me, I see maybe 10 lions being presented to me and I can say, no, 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 that ain't it. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you're with me. You'll never leave me nor forsake me. Father, I thank you that you fight for me. I thank you that I can hold my peace. I didn't have to go in there and pick up a rock ready to, Father, I thank you that you are my fortress. You are my deliverer, my God, my strength. You are who I trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I thank you that you shall save me. You have saved me from my enemies. We can name our enemies, those thoughts that we entertain too long, enemy. Whether it's a devil, enemy. Whether it's a sickness, enemy. Disease, enemy. But we're saved from those enemies. We are saved from those enemies. Just like our salvation saves us not only from hell, but it saves us from sin. Salvation is not just about, God, I'm going to die and not go to hell. I can live hell free now. I don't have to live in sin because I've been saved. I've been delivered from my enemy and sin is an enemy. Not just about getting on the other side. I know when I get on the other side, I'll be healed and whole. True, but we can be healed and whole now. 
Can we access, will we access what God has made available for each and every one of us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind? It's, it's faith. It's, it's understanding that, whoa, I see all of this stuff. I see the doctor's report. I see, I see that man with that gun. I see that man with that knife. I see the, I, 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 I hear the voice, whether it's in your head or out of your head, I hear the voice of an enemy. But looking at that stuff and saying, no, that's not my reality. My reality is what God has said about me, that I'm free. Okay, you're hearing a voice. My sheep know my voice and another they shall not follow, which, which leads you to say, hey, look, well, that doesn't, that means that I could hear other voices from times, from time to time. I can hear other voices. Fine. But my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. So I hear you. But that ain't the voice of God. He says this. This is what he says about me. So shut up. Get lost. Whether you want to say I bind you or this or that. Shut your mouth. Stop talking to me because this is what God. You say I'm a failure. God says I am more than a conqueror. You say I'm defeated. God says I'm victorious but I just don't feel victorious. Freak your feelings. Start to operate, start to walk, start to do the things, start to speak from victory and your feelings will catch up. But I feel, but I feel that's an enemy because it's trying to tell you something other than what God has said about you. That's an enemy. But, 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 that's an enemy. All right, so this is just another, it's just another step, another installment as we talk about mind renewal and really walking this thing out because there's so many examples. And again, mind renewal, just like every other, just like every gift that, that a manifestation that Paul talked about in Corinthians, they can go with this. Healing can go with the gift of faith. Uh, words of knowledge with, with prophecy you know, things of that nature. And so mind renewal is faith, but it's understanding something to really be able to change. And faith can be applied everywhere, right? But when you're renewing your mind, it's changing the very way that you think. It's, cha it's, it's changing the, fa the very fabric of you. It's reprogramming you. It's like taking an old computer and overriding that programming with went from Windows 7 to Windows 11 or whatever. I'm not, whatever, right? You've got a new, the newest programming, right? But here's the thing with at least at some point, Windows would let you go back and access Windows 7. This is what we do as believers. We go back and access the old mindset because that's what we were comfortable or familiar with. And so with Windows, with Windows, there were programs that, okay, they only made them at a certain time, so you can only access it in Windows 7. If you got Windows 11, you can't access it until you revert back. Well, that stuff back then, we don't want to revert back to grab. That's dead. It's an obsolete operating system. So my renewal changes your operating system to understand that, hey, I'm operating from a higher perspective. It's still, it's still faith is involved, but it changes that operating system to now, this is my functionality. This is how I see that. Oh, you see that? You see death? Well, I, I see the glory of God. You see victimization? Wow, I see, victor I see victory. You see somebody didn't get healed? I see this is for the glory of God. And they are healed already. Wait, wait and see. It's mind renewal and it's vital. Oh, man, so I'm going to open the floor right now. If anybody that has any questions, comments, or concerns about the word that's gone forth. Um, but if not, close it. But anybody at all, any questions, comments, or concerns? Dev, are you saying something? Because your mic's muted. Yeah, yeah. That made me think about, you know, before we, before we was in Christ, you know, it's like we're not like we are now, we are protected now. Like, um, 
Like uh, when, when 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 he went into the lines, then you know he probably had a little, like you said, a little fear, a little a little skin. He try probably try to. I know it tried to present itself to him. What he said. <laughs> Uh-uh. So because think about it. Think about it. And this is truth. Because if he did let like that fear get to him, he didn't trust. So you know the out how the outcome would be. The outcome would be like it is it, it happened. But he didn't let that fear, that fear, whatever that, that lie that presented to him, he didn't believe it. He he believed in. You know what it is—the truth that he's protected that you know, and um, he went. And he I bet he walked in there. You know, like he said, lady had his foot on the line. But I bet you he, he didn't do that first off. He probably went in there and got in the corner and just, you know. Then you know later on he's like, he ain't no, I mean, sleep <laughs> like that. But um, that made me think of uh situations we go through today. You know. That you may be scared of, not paying attention that you have a holy father in the heaven who is your son. I mean, I mean, who is your father? You are his son. Yeah. You have nothing to fear. Why? But he say time and time again in the scripture, do not fear. Do not fear. But if you do fear, that's gonna be your reality because you didn't believe him. You know, we didn't we didn't trust and have faith in him to, to get us out of that situation or you know, it's the blessings in that situation. We, 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 the people say, you know, how, how, how did you serve God? How did he not do this to you? I mean, how, how did this happen? And yada, yada, yada. Mm. But you didn't, you didn't believe, you didn't have faith, you know? Come on. You didn't believe that he can, is able to, and, 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 and the scripture says when you don't have faith and, he he can't move. He's he's God Almighty. He can do anything, but he can't do something because you don't have you don't believe, you know. Yeah. And that's that, that that that's a lot, bro. He like you gotta have, you gotta have you gotta keep that faith and walk in it and walk in it and believe in. It. You know, have your mind renewed and believe in it and know not but just believe but know that. Um, that God is Almighty. He is who He says He is, and uh, walk it out because uh, there is no room for doubt. Because doubt, when you see what Thomas is walking on the water, so, I mean, I mean Peter, as soon as he, as soon as he turned away, he started doubting. He started sinking. But uh, you know, the Lord is there to pick him back up. You know, but as soon as that's why we walk this thing out of faith, believing and trust. That should probably be the next one. Peter walking on water. On the next mile, you know, it should probably be that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's definitely a good one. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, brother, for for that that input, that that insight that God has given you on that. There, man, it's just it's just important. It's just important. And if we don't have faith, it's not to say that look, I'm better or he's better. Like we're all growing. And so if you sometimes look, you get sick, if I ain't had a fit, okay, look, I got sick. We gonna we we working on this thing. We climbing. You know what I mean? You know, and just because we experience, like it's just because Daniel experienced fear, and it doesn't say that, but we can imagine, right? He's human. So just because he experienced the fear, he didn't give in to that fear. Experiencing it doesn't mean that you're coming into agreement with it. It's trying to say, hey, look, look, look at your body. Why are your hands shaking? You afraid, right? Why your heart beating fast? You afraid, right? I'm like, no, no. <laughs> and you know what I mean? You got lions. Lions have that purr that you feel grumbling through your body, yo. Like, like come on. You muted. You muted, Dad. I was saying, yeah, bro. Oh, man. You're there. Oh, oh, my right. goodness. Right, for more than one, it was a den of them. More than one? <laughs> nah, buddy. But you know, God, God is even the God of those lions, right? I want to know what was going through his mind. We're gonna find out. Bad. What was he doing? <laughs> 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 
when we first had a baby. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know, he, I, know he, I wonder if he said, oh, snaps. I actually wonder if he said that. My man said, Jesus. <laughs> like, he wasn't even around. He said, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's some scary stuff, bro. 